Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Service Rendered Incorporated. And Straight Talk Vermont is a program, one of our programs. We have many. And um, I'd like to start off saying that um, we'd like for individuals to check out our, our Art So Wonderful um, Gallery in the University Mall. And we're also building a uh, Art So Wonderful Studio in the um, City, Bur City Place Burlington tomorrow to help individuals who want to do, who just want to just come out and do art, and we're going to provide that for them. We have a space there, around 1,000 square feet, and uh, we're going to help them um, wherever their needs are. Our space in the University Mall is over 5,000 square feet. Incredible art from um, individuals from around the state. You know, we sell their art, and, uh, you know, and, and I really appreciate uh, my art director, is Alondra de la Cuesta. She, she's our curator and art director. She's an incredible person. I couldn't do this work without her. And um, we have all the art in there because of her and people who want to be a part of it. And I just want to say something. I, I think we are, we're, not, um, we're not better than no one because this is the first time we did art um, galleries. We usually have the youth centers, chill-out centers, living rooms, Loft 89 and Fairhaven. All across the state we had open up youth centers in the malls. But um, this is my first time. But I think that we're, because we um, want to work and we, what we do is help people with their goals, dreams, and aspirations, that um, our art gallery, is, we don't charge you nothing to, to um, put your art up. And then um, we only take 30%. So you get 70% of your art. And the youth that have art in there, they get, tw um, we only take, um, they get 80% of the art. So, so we're very happy about how it's going. It's, you know, we had it for like two years now. And it's um, it's going well. You know, we had some um, situation with the COVID. You know, which probably everyone had. Can't say it was a bad thing, but it seemed like it because a lot of people d died. But my degree in psychology, so I got to go. What's good? You know, be objective, and judge judgmental. But um, today we have an incredible guest, the Honorable Max Tracy, Burlington Pres City Council President. Oh man, how important is that? You know how important that job is, and you know I know a lot of you have heard of, of Burlington City Council. You might have presented there. You've seen some. You saw um, Max there, you know, and um, and you hear what the issues are, their, their goals and issues are. They have a lot of things they go. Oh God, I've been to some of the um, meetings there, on, on, um, probably more or less on youth agenda items and also development developments because some of my advisory board members are developers. But um, oh, it's a long, it's a long day at um, City Council. So Max, thank you for coming on Straight Talk. Thank for you my so show. much. Really appreciate you uh, having me. Oh man, I really appreciate you coming on to tell that our audience know exactly what you know what you're the president and what um, Burlington City Council. Um, what, what 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 you know? Well, let's start off with how did you get involved with this? What I mean, what's your what's your your you know, your short end of your bio? You know. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I came to Vermont uh, in 2005 to go to UVM, and while at the university, I got heavily involved in activism and politics. Um, that was one of the things that drew me to this area and just the human scale of, of those things. Um, you know, being from Chicago, you know uh, that it's tough. To, it can be tough to get involved there unless you're into like the kind of machine politics kind of things. And so I, I really appreciated what I saw as sort of the more human scale of Vermont politics and the ability to get involved. And so came to Vermont um, to study and uh, I got involved with some of the, the student movements that were taking place at the time focused on um, on labor issues up at the uh, up at the up at U the UVM campus namely around getting livable wages for all campus workers and sort of along the same time frame I was also working pretty closely with the Vermont Progressive Party and you know I was very attracted by the idea of having a more pluralistic political system by a party that didn't take any corporate money um, and just you know some of the key issues that the progressives have focused on over the years, things like single payer health care, mm -hmm. um, you know, not supporting the ongoing you know and continuous military industrial complex, just a number of those types of things. So I got involved with some working on some some campaigns with the progressives as well. So um, when I graduated um, from UVM, I ended up running in 2010, losing. Um, staying involved, getting on boards and commissions, and then eventually running again in 2012, at which point I, I, I won that election and I've been on for the city council, council ever right? since. For yeah, council, for city you, council. You the first one, then you, then you won in 2012. Yeah, and so I've been on since, since 2000, on the city council since 2012, representing this ward where we are now, Ward 2, 
um, right in the heart of the Old North End. Um, so it's been it's been absolutely incredible, just a, a, a true honor to be on the council and get to serve the community in this way. Well, Max, I'm telling you, man. Um, first of all, um, I, you know I like you know I'm, I like the um, the goals and the trail that you blaze for yourself and um, coming to uh, Vermont. You know, <laughs> you know it's kind of weird. You know, like you know, it's, it's, well, we love Vermont. You know, the lakes and the mountains. You know, you know everything about Vermont. You know, but um, coming from Chicago, as you said, you know, I mean, it's like so much. It's a gigantic place. You know, so much different than Vermont. But um, you know, just to come here, like I came here in 89, and um, I first used to bring me home when I was young. I told this story to our audience many times. And then um, I love the lakes and the mountains, you know, and but I still I go back home and see my family, you know, as often as I can because I still oh, love, yeah. I still love um, the skyscrapers and, um, you know, Lake Michigan. I love um, 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 the Millennium, uh, I mean, the, um, yeah, um, uh, what's the name of the, um, Millennium, Millennium yeah. Park, yeah. the Bean, yeah, all um, that stuff. Yeah. Navy Pier, and um, you know I like you know the Loop, Uptown, Newtown, uh, Magnificent Mile, um, all those incredible architectural designs and buildings like um, like um, Tribune Building. They call they got oh, that incredible, building. It's right? incredible, right? <laughs> yeah, you you definitely miss those things. I definitely miss those. Certainly the family and those things. But you know I think. Yeah, and love the just just love the smaller scale yeah. that we got going on here, and sure. the ability to connect within no the community. About it. Yep, and, and I just want to say one thing I miss the most about Chicago is that the Art Institute, the Museum of Science and History, the Museum of Natural History, the Aquarium, um, the Zoo, Brookfield and Lincoln Park Zoo. I mean, yeah, the culture is amazing. I know, man, it's so cool. You know, I miss that the most. But I, when I go home, I try to go there, you know, and check out some of the things that um, that I. Loved when was, my folks used to take me to when I was a kid, but um so um this the um the student uh, livable um, wages that's what you was um pr trying to uh, mm -hmm. build in, at UVM. One of the things you try to do was um student liv uh, livable wages, and um how important is that? Now were you one that wants to take over the Billings? I mean, yeah, uh, oh yeah. Wh William, what was it? What is the Billings? What's going on? Uh, we took over uh, the the, um, the, yeah. the the president's wing when yeah, I was. When that I was, was there. that was what was the name of it now? That's uh, Waterman. Waterman's. The yeah, Waterman. The Waterman's. The president's, president's wing yeah. in the Waterman building. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I ended up. We yeah. I was yeah. part of that that, <laughs> that takeover. That was the last. I was there watching you guys. You the last guys successful you. takeover. Yeah. And then we had to sit in outside of it and, yeah. and all that. You actually took that place over too. You guys. Yeah. Did. We had all kinds of different yeah. actions that we did as. To, to put to bring pressure on yeah. them to, to raise yeah. the wages for folks and sure. you know the battle continues to this day you know with staff having just successfully organized a union for the first time I think they saw that you know they needed it they needed the real real protection <coughs> that comes with 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 organizing a union and and so they, they were able to successfully do that and then you also see you know student movements continuing uh, sort of I see you know picking up that call around the wages um, you know, maybe a little bit of a different form in the sense that you know they're trying to get Sodexo off their campus, and Sodexo has been sort of one of the the employers that mm -hmm. has not paid those livable mm -hmm. wages for yeah. years and years, yeah, and yeah, just they've been there has a bad track record. Yeah, I know um, a chef that works there on the campus. Yeah, right. Ooh. yeah, you know the the workers are great. The yeah. workers yeah, are awesome. No, we're not there. Can't do, we, yeah, yeah, it's the company to, that's the right, issue, right, really. I, I, and I, I think those workers should get paid more because they're working so hard. Yeah, they do. In order to make sure, you know, make sure that the students have good food to eat. So. That's always been 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 something that I, you know yeah. that I've cared about since I got here because I always yeah. saw you know those those rank and file workers up on the campus you know really making a daily impact on students' lives. No doubt about it. Yes, yeah, so not getting paid enough to live in yeah. a very you know in 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 you know an area where it, it can be you know, really challenging to find um, you know affordable housing and things like that. And so mm -hmm. you know I think that that's something that mm -hmm. we need to really that they need to that the university really needs to continue yeah. continue to address. So let's talk about affordable housing, livable wages, which you, you really fight hard for, for people who look like me, people of color, BIPOC. You, want, you really want, like, you know, listen, people who look like me need to have um, housing, livable wages, and um, we need to help them with, you know, get some, get some houses, you know what I mean? Get some, uh, you know, make sure they have, like you were discussing just a minute ago, livable wages. That is so important. I appreciate that you, you, you know, you, that's one of your platforms. You know, um, it is your it's one incredible platform that before, like, Black Lives Matter and, you know, all, you know, all these incredible um, events that um, people of color are going through and, and are going through and has, you know, um, that we created, you know. 
Um, so, you know, when I learned that about you, that work, I'm like, wow, he was doing this before, you know what I mean, all this hype about Black Lives Matters and everything about, you know, um, people of color and BIPOC, you know, and um, um, you were there on, you know, boots on the ground helping people to get housing and livable wages and um, be represented in, in, in places where, like, uh, that they um, might norm like, not normally might be represented in, on. Um, and so, I, you know, I appreciate that about you, you know what I mean? I'm, you know, as a person of color, you know, I, you know, who wouldn't, who wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? So thank you, thank you very mm -hmm. much for letting let that still continue to be your platform and work with, with people who look like me to get better, better, and learn ways how they can get housing and liberal wages and, you know, a lot of grass, grassroots things that um, um, they can get involved with that they don't even know about. Because I'm telling you something, I've been around since 1989, and, um, and I'll tell you something that I know for a fact, that um, every time I've been going to meetings with all uh, kind of incredible people, you know, leaders in, in the state, and I'm, and I, I'm probably like the only one that's in the room. Me, and I look over 300 people, oh, there's a black person over there. There's a person of color over there. There's a, you know, I mean, well, right there, out of 300 people, you just, you know, come on, man. Come on, man. You know, I know he's like, well, zero, zero point one percent of African Americans or whatever. You know, it's more state. than that now. Right now, it's more than that now. What I'm saying, when I came in, it was a white state of America. I think you know? it's still the second whitest state well, in, yeah. in the country. I mean, I think that still, though, I think what you're saying is, is very true, which is that even even that being the case, that we still see a disproportionately white, you know, sort of engage, you know. Um, uh, P political sort of yeah. scene you know in a lot of ways just across the state and so I think that that's that's a certainly a piece of this you know I think the other piece that I was taking from what you were saying is also that you know while there is this and necessary focus on the the criminal justice system and specifically on on policing and making real progress on the systemically racist policing systems that we have in place and have have developed and are still you know, unfortunately, so some are still really resistant to changing. You know, I think that, that, that it, you can see that, you know, that the fear that gets mobilized on that really um, is, it, you know, is, is unfortunate and is part of this, this effort to really kind of take those things down. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think that, that that is also mobilized to really focus a lot of attention on that one particular issue when the issue is much more broad. You know, there's, the, there's questions around uh, economic and and, and, and social um, inclusion and, and and progress that you know we're, we're quite frankly not making nearly enough progress on you know thinking about like on the housing front you know we see a rate of black home ownership that is pathetic um, you know some people will say oh I'm shocked you know that there are only yeah. essentially like right. seven black home black owned homes or or properties in you know in in Burlington. I mean, it's it's the, the number. Some people will say they're shocked, but but, the, but that's that's not that shouldn't be shocking to us. You know, we have a systemically racist system yep. that has been developed over many years to create those outcomes. It shouldn't come as a shock to us that those are the outcomes of this system. What you know, what should be surprising to us is that you know we we you know we just haven't been able to make nearly enough progress on those things. Yeah. Well, I think. Um, the um, front so all of us, you know, I sit on the Vermont State Police Fair and Partial Policing. I, I help uh, sit in right, Winooski. I live in Winooski as I sit on the uh, school district uh, anti racism committee. I sit on the governor's level with the uh, anti racism committee. Um, we help uh, Uncommon Alliance, and years ago we helped change um, the data collection. And now only on the back of tickets, you, you people have their race and ethnicities or who you are or whatever on it. And, um, and so we, we made some. Um, we did some distance here in Vermont on these issues, but I still, but, but um, it's not s still clear. It's not, it's not, it's not working. To be honest with you, because you know, if any of those boys that 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 um, that's out there, I probably was on there. Or somebody, I have some mm -hmm. opinion. I had something out. Yeah, your your you involvement know. is so yeah. so yeah. so deep and wide in terms yeah. of just so so um, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, you know, it's, it's how that everybody's got like a equity and inclusion person in the city, in their cities now, probably because of Floyd or Black Lives Matter. And, um, and so why do you think, why do you think now everybody's like, you know, why do you think anybody's on board? Like not everybody, but a lot of people like, when I you used to look at TV and you're talking about Black Lives Matter, it was more like more white people out there than black people. So, uh, you know, I think that, that um, they um, kind of, and young, young people, and um, 
and I think they, uh, I personally think that they um, um, understand the plight of, the, you know, they, you know, the plight of uh, people, African Americans or people of color, based on that um, they, we were never in their history books. You know, we, we they didn't know nothing about us. You know, another thing too is that um, we didn't live right, we don't live next door to you. We don't go to church with you. We don't go to the grocery store with you. We don't so. Um, so you really don't know us, and how you know us is by st stereotypical ways. You know, it's from um, some on TV, the magazines you read. Oh, look at those black people. They living in, look at their neighborhoods. They out there, they, look at them looting the riot, the stores. You know, you know, white people just they do the same thing, you know what I mean? They, they probably more do more than, or, the same, or, or, Absolutely. or the same. Yeah, they do but, much but more. But they, um, they put that against us. So you might hear Oprah Winfrey or somebody saying, you know, Somebody, some black person making some achievements somewhere down. I'm, I mean, you might hear, you do hear it from her. Um, so, so justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and uh, equity and inclusion is uh, they have started the cities, cities around the country. It's hard. It's no office that have equity and inclusion, you know, directors in it. I bet it isn't. Yeah, nowhere it is. I bet everybody have one. Somebody in. So, um, for me. I think that's a good thing to, to do, to have somebody equity and inclusion. But, you know, you really, I, I, you know, I, I, went, I went to Northwestern, so I, I guess I really never heard nobody uh, majoring in equity and inclusion or justice and equity. And I really, I don't think that, I, don't, I never heard of nobody getting a degree in that. And so, so I think that, um, that um, for me, you know, um, you know, in, in one of my shows I had on here, I'm just going to back up for a minute for it. I gotta watch what I say. Is I had um, um, Taisha. Oh, show. great! I had um, Yasna nice. from um, Winooski. Oh, cool! Equity. These are all equity. Awesome. Well, Taisha is more racial. She 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 would yeah. put you straight. I'm racial, you know, in, in the inclusion. And Erin uh, McGuire from Essence. She works in a school district Very with cool. um with students around equity and inclusion and diversity. Nice. And so I had them on the show. This right here we are, and they you know they were talked about. A lot of in, in incredible things that um, that um, they they do one in the community and this thing and the other, and so by me being um, when I was when I was growing up um, in Chicago, I was part of the civil rights movement. I'm like Jesse Jackson and uh, Jackie Jackson and Harold Mel, Mel came to my house, and I was part of Operation Push, Operation Bash, SCLC, Urban League, all that for years. You know I me mean? for so when I came to Vermont. Um, I had all this instilled me. My folks used to bring me up here. And my mother, I told her one year I was going to move here because I was looking at um, um, uh, Discovery Channel. And they were talking about Vermont, you know, uh, unity and freedom, underground railroad ran through here. Um, was, they was against slavery, you know, which is, you know, they, they, I think they did have some slavery. I learned the other, not long right, ago. Right, I mean, yeah. that, that picture is, a, right, right. is more complicated than yeah, I think yeah. many Vermonters yeah. would like to believe yeah, in the yeah. sense that, you know, slavery was, but, but the one was outlawed but then existed in many forms no, well, right. beyond the, well beyond that, that, that actual mm -hmm. constitutional well, document. that's what made me come. I mean, one, of the other, one of the main reasons it came up to me was, um, I can't think of her name now, and the family who lives in Charlotte, I can have that. The Clemens family? Family. 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 I see yeah. her son, he, we was at the... African First Landing in, in event in, um, and um, he was talking uh, and and um, I never met her. It was funny. I, I was tell, somebody asked me about why I came here, and I was telling a story about that. And I we need to meet that lady, Miss Clemens. You know I mean, I, I, I and I, I still met her. And they say she just left. And I'm like, oh no, I just missed her. So I got so I sent her some emails, and I, I, well. I'm going to because when I come in for the kids. As a kid, my first we used to go to um, her store, Africa Authentica. That was her her store name. Her store. I was like, wow, there's a, there's a black lady in there. She had a place called Africa Authentica. When she import export, you know, stuff art, masks, wow. those kinds of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, wow, you know. So and they put it on the screen. So I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. So and so um, one, I'm gonna tell you the story. I tell it all the time. When, when, not all the time, but when I can. I like the story. I told my mother, she told me when I told her I was coming, she said, you're going to you're gonna make a difference up there. And I thought because it was a white state in America when I came here, 89, and then um, and, um, I was in the civil rights movement. I thought that's what, kind of what she meant. But, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I already knew I was going to make a difference. But um, um, because of who I am, you know, like, you know, I was raised, I was raised. Mm -hmm. But um, 
Um, so one year I called my mother and said, Mom, Mom, I made a difference, I made a difference. She said, what'd you do, what'd you do? She probably thought I created like rocket fuel or something. I said, I said, it's the second white thing. <laughs> she said, boy, I told you it's gonna make a difference. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't make it. So one vote do count, you know what I mean? So, uh, so, I, so I made a difference. I'm in Vermont, you know, I do a lot of things. I'm, I'm a community organizer. I work on a new service provider. Uh, you know, like you said, I do a lot of things, you know. I'm, also, I'm on a, you know, I'm the Winitsky, um Democratic chairman. They selected me like a month ago and sit on a lot of different things. And I was formerly a commissioner in, in um, Winitsky. And um, I was on board directors for one year for Parks and Recs and blah, blah, blah. A lot of stuff, you know, I did, you know, and still do, yeah, you know. But uh, um, so um, so those type of things that I did, well, in Burlington, first first and foremost, that's where I first moved to, on uh, Maple Street. And, uh, and uh, is that um, <clears throat> I think my goal was work with youth, you know what I mean, youth service provider. That was my my, that's what I'm the best at as a community organizer, <clears throat> working with youth and um, families and community. I'm the best at that. You know, I, I don't see I'm better than nothing but that. Somebody want me to <clears throat> help them organize something. People do around, around a, a lot of cities, and primarily around Chittenden County, ask me to help them pull together. Like this is a, I did some things like for the National Night Out. We did the Out and About event. We did. Juneteenth event, you know what I'm talking about? So, you know. Yeah, Juneteenth was spectacular in Burlington this year. Yeah, no, I was there. I was there. It was amazing. Me and the mayor was hanging out, you know. You know, he was, you know, it was good to see him there. He was just in the park over here mm -hmm. all day. It was great. Yeah. Free food, incredible no. performances. No. Lots of learning taking place. Wow. It was incredible. Wow, so I can't wait to next year. It was, it was, it was gigantic. So I went to That's the first to experience. How, you know, what's going to happen in the coming years? I think yeah. it's going to only grow and only get, get well, more. Well, you know, I, I think that, um, I know Taisha has something to do with that, and um, Yasmin has something to do with it, and um, Winiski, and um, Oisa Makuku has something to do with it, or she was not something oh, to do with it. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a huge she's, effort. She's she playing in S's. And so, um, so um, is they, they're only going to get better, because I think the outcome measurements were saying that, you know, we got we, we need to do that. We need to, and Oisa was thinking about a better location, and, and I think I don't know what you can do better in, in Burlington. They had, like, many sites that they was running to. And, um, and, um, Winooski, they did this rotary. They had like a Myra Flam performing and Craig Mitchell. It was it was incredible. So I was I was at all three because I, you know, I got to be there and to, to represent people who look like me. But um, <clears throat> so Max, let's talk about um city council or some. Um, yeah, you sure. guys got a lot of objectives with agendas. I mean, good lord, you look at your agenda and like you know it's like when you guys meet. Um, you met Monday. Yep, we met this past Monday. What was that about? So we had a number of different things on the agenda, everything from, um, the, uh, from uh, the downtown tax increment financing district to um, some zoning changes to uh, a resolution having to do with the Sears Lane encampment mm -hmm. and the future of, of that site um, going forward. Um, that was kind of the primary item that we discussed on, on that day. Um, the Progressive Caucus's feeling is that, you know, we should really continue to try and create an effective management strategy for that site and that um, we need to make sure that, you know, we're, that, that people weren't just getting kicked out, that they were actually um, being placed in a situation where they had secure housing, uh, if that was their choice, recognizing that's, that, that some folks just, you know, were, were, were wanting to stay on the site and to try and hopefully find a management strategy that would work for that. And so... Um, that was the, the, the resolution that was brought um, to, to the council on Monday. So that was seemed pretty short, but <laughs> you hear a lot of stuff. You know, you guys always say it's like for, you be like, I don't know how you can, you know, well, it's part of your job, you know, make sure things can get, get, be right. And, you know, let's say everybody what they got to say, learn from the people who you serve. That's what, I'm the best at that. I could never do none of this work without, you know, like, like, um, listening to you or you know your constituents and the mayor and people like you when the work I do is like I don't I don't or you find work with or community people <laughs> and I tell you a story is that Tony Lamb told me he was I don't know if he was a, a lawyer he's a mediation lawyer years ago years ago he said I was telling him a story about um uh, me going to um Bailey Howe Library at UVM to find out a law he's a lawyer he was a lawyer to find out a law answer and so I was telling him, like, when I went to this, you know, I'm talking to Tony, and I went to Bailey Howe, I was talking to the rest of you. Can you tell me where the law books are? And she said, oh, the black law books are around the corner. I'm thinking, 
uh, you know, here's my psychologist. Okay, I'll be objective. Now. I said, excuse me, ma'am? She said, the black law books. Man. So I walked around to that corner like like a puppy, you know, like with a tail with his leg. Sure enough, the name of the law books is black law books. And, and Tony was like, he didn't need like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, you know, like, he's like, what's up? What's the story? Keep going with the story. And so, so when I found out the answer, I thought I found the answer. <clears throat> and it took me like over an hour to find the answer that I was looking for. I went to present the answer. And when they told me that, Bruce, that's not the answer. I'm, I'm ready to flip the table over. I'm like, yeah, that's the answer. I told me, you know. They said, no, somebody probably forgot to put the amendment in the book. Uh, you know, so I'm telling Tony. So you Tony, saw like an outdated book or something like that? Yeah, so Tony that's told me, Bruce, Bruce, all you do is ask me. I get the answer in five yeah, minutes. Yeah. So that's what, so after that, 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 that you know, like I said, I learned from the yeah. people who, who knows. And so, you know, if you want, if you, <clears throat> like all my youth, we have a, the program that we have. Um, it's a peer peer. You know, yes, you know, uh -huh. we'll talk about you from Boston in a few minutes. But, uh, um, <clears throat> but um, I always tell them if you need some answers from a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, we know them all. We're going to take you right to them. We want to talk to the president of the, and which we do, you worked with our youth on um, creating, um, re revising our resolution for youth from Boston, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But, and so, so that's how I'm the best at that. I have like, I always say I got like 900 PhDs because I, I know the people who knows the answer. I don't try to know the answer myself. I, why, why would I, you know what I mean? So, and you know the answer, yeah. Tony Lamb taught me that. So this make more sense and that's why I tell these kids, that's, that's why we know so many people because I go right to the people who knows the answer for these youth and they get them right, right. where they want to, yeah. what they want to be at, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And so um, so, um, so <clears throat> let's talk about a little bit, you know, that you know, you ran for mayor. Yeah, that I did. Oh, that was a good one. And um, you know, people tell me vote for you. You know, I said, oh, I live in Birmingham. You know, a lot because the people I work with, you know, with on your team, Brian, and all those cool people was telling me to support you and boot yeah. them around. And I, I did support you. I mean, I couldn't vote for you, but I did support you because I thought that uh, you know, um, Monroe was my friend for years. I thought your um. You know, <clears throat> I thought your objectives and um, and you, like I said, all the things I just said about you, you know, working with people of color and uh, uh, trying to want them to have housing and, and uh, be a part of, be a, get them involved in the things that they probably n normally not involved in. You know what I mean? Like, 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 you know, like um, city council, jobs, uh, livable wages, getting them on the equity and inclusion, you know, things that mm -hmm. your platform was way before is like so popular mm -hmm. before now. So that was the reason why it's like, I, you know, that's why I support, you know, support you in, my, in the best ways I could. I mean, and, uh, you know, I really don't hear nobody say those things, you know, other mayors or candidate mayor really say those things like you said, you know, like you said. And I think a lot of people didn't hear those things from other candidates like you said it either. And so that's why you probably you lost by what two two votes or something. Like that. Not that close, not quite that close, but it was <clears throat> it was still close. And I think the thing though about it though is that you know having support, you know, from from so many folks across the community like yourself, you know, yeah. you really I, at least I really felt that. And so you know people are like, oh, I'm so sorry you lost all this. And yeah, of course it's disappointing, but the reality is that I just feel incredibly grateful <laughs> from all the support that I got from from members of the community. Just, just, it was just absolutely incredible to, to feel that support from people, you know, just to see people stepping up continuously. I, you mm. know, I feel nothing but, but, but gratitude for, for the opportunity that I had to, to run that race and um, just the support that people brought to the table was just absolutely incredible. So I can't say enough about, about the effort for I, sure. I think that, um, you know, if that had not been the case, maybe I'd feel differently, but mm. because it was, I mean, I can't, I can't say that I have, you know, a, a bitter taste in my mouth by any well, means. You know, I, 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 you know, I love Monroe, you know, on, on one hand as a personal friend, and, you know, what, what Stacy Beekman, and I know them for, for forever. I, you know, I know those girls growing sure, up. Sure, sure, yeah. <clears throat> but that's that's on the personal side, on the business side. <clears throat> I have some, you know, my own objections about some things. Sure. Run. But um, <clears throat> so my, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you got to run again, bro. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I don't know about that, but we'll Are see. Are you serious? We'll see, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I think there's 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 a long time between then and now, and so you know we'll I'm see. Almost how long? I'm, what's oh, it's over two years. So so I'm a, what's, he's got. Well, it's I know. Half years. It's a so long it's three, time. They got three year term now. Yeah, right? three year term. Yeah. So I it's a while. Peter it's Cabrera, a while. He, yeah. He, he's like, we need three years. You know, Peter was like, 
Peter Hoel. Oh, right, yeah, because it used to be two-year terms, and then right. Peter got it, got it shifted right. over. Right. And I can see that for sure. I mean, I think that a council term that's only two years is pretty short yeah. itself, in and of it itself. Is. Yeah, yeah it's so you, you definitely have to, um, well, yeah, you know, it's all up to you and your family, whoever, you know, what you're going to do. But, um, we'll see. I mean, you know, I mean, what could be your next step as the president of the city, uh, as on Burlington City Council? What, what could be your next step? I mean, what, what are you going to say? Forget it. I ain't, I ain't going to do that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I really like serving on the council. Yeah. It's been, mm -hmm. it's been, you know, like yeah. I said, just such an honor to, yeah. to be able to serve my community in this way and to, to get mm -hmm. to work with so many different people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I really enjoy that. And I, I try not to put too much stock into, you know, being too overly ambitious around you know kind of kind of coming up i just try and focus on the task at hand right now you know i don't i don't really know what the next steps are in this and i think part of that's also grounded in the fact that you just never know what's going to come up for you in in, in, in your life and so i just you know try and take it take it one step at a time and kind of see where it is but you know for, for right now i'm really enjoying being on the yeah, council no doubt about it i mean you know you're doing a good, great job and um and uh, so what is a uh, um uh, um Burlington um, City Council President. What did, what, did, what do you do? What's your job? What the hell do you do? Yeah, bro? so it's it's a little bit different than being a regular city yeah. councilor because you know a, a a city councilor just you know who's serving on the body, they're um, they're uh, they're on committees and they're doing that 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 work uh, at that level as well. Um, there's a variety of different standing committees that you serve on. And that's really where you, you know a good bit of your time can get focused. It can really take up a lot of a lot of your time and energy as a counselor to do that committee work. But when you're the council president, you don't serve on committees for the most part. Sometimes you'll fill in a little bit, but your your role really becomes to to, to put together the meeting. So, in terms of getting all the different requests um, for the for the agenda, getting the agenda set 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 in a way that's manageable. Um, and, and putting that together. And then the other piece is also um, running the meeting itself. So you get the agenda, you get that out, and then you gotta run the meeting itself um, and, and facilitate the, the, the meeting. And then there's all kinds of other things that, that come along with, with it, you know, like just managing different processes that, that happen over the course of the year. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of the role it is it is certainly different than being just a counselor you take a step back the other piece is also that's different is that you know you're running the, the full council so when you're in those council meetings you're really moderating you're not like mm -hmm. arguing the points and, and really entering into the debate you're just kind of helping the debate to take place mm -hmm. so why so why did they choose you to be the president what do you think well I mean I, by the time when we got to the place of you know of having the votes to, 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 to do that, you know, I, I, I felt like it was a, ch a new challenge for me, something different. I had been on the council for, at that point, eight years. And so I felt like, you know, I had done committee work for a long time. I had never done the council president role. I wanted to, 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 to have that challenge of running the meetings and shifting kind of my approach to, to my engagement um, within, that, within that body to this more um, facilitator kind of role um, and in that also just trying to help you know other counselors with getting their stuff you know onto the agendas getting new counselors situated um, those types of things so I, I wanted to just to do something different within it because you know after eight years of doing the the, the counselor the straight counselor role it was nice to to have the opportunity to do something a little bit different mm -hmm. So, uh, is those city councils like um, the board of directors for the mayor? I mean, like, you know, you guys in charge, is that how it works? Can I mean, you, like, um, impeach the mayor? No, we don't actually have an impeachment article in our charter. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of, um, you know, there's, you know, we have kind of a two, uh, two different branches of, of, of city government that are in many ways co-equal. Um, there are some, some, some powers that are given to the mayor that, that, that the council just doesn't have or can't override. Um, but in many cases, you know, you need both to be working together for city government mm -hmm. to work effectively. Um, and a lot of the big choices require both, you know, approval or support from both the mayor and the council to move forward. And so... No doubt about it. Yeah, they definitely, you know, the mayor always needs your approval for to move forward. So, for right, sure. I mean, like you said, it's a few things that he... I don't think can he, he can't approve no like planning and zoning or nothing like that, right? Can he? Nope, can't change zoning. He can't, you know, appoint department heads himself. He can't. Oh, he can. Yeah. The budget, you know, he has to get the budget approved by the full by the, the by the full city council. So there's 
know, there's a number of really important functions that he has to work closely with the he with the the, the council on. Good. Is the mayor a Democrat or a progressive uh, or a liberal? I don't know what's his status. I mean, what's uh, so he's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. So, <clears throat> and how many Democrats are on the um, council? Uh, so there's four Democrats on the council. And then progressives. How many? Uh, there's six six progressives okay, on the council. So you, so and then there's two independents. Councilors oh, okay. uh, Barlow and Jang are both independents. And then you have. <laughs> Um, the, 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 the Democrats are councillors, uh, Mason, Carpenter, um, uh, Paul, and Shannon. Mm -hmm. So what about, what about Ding? Is he a, or is he a, he must be a Democrat, huh? No, he's an independent. Uh, oh, he's independent. Oh, okay. He was a fusion candidate, meaning a, a Democrat and progressive, mm -hmm. but then he, he's since shifted to being an independent in well, recent years. I want to tell you something. In Winooski, one of the things that I'm, that, that I've talked to my, team my uh, executive team about is that we if you're going to be a, if you're a progressive or liberal or, we love you all but you know you can't ride on the, um, we, we're not gonna let you ride on the Democratic you know for you know getting you know like be a progressive and a Democrat you know we think that's not you know you got to call one or the other you know I think it's that's fair I mean you know you just can't you know then all of a sudden um, when it comes down to um, economics and um, you know then say um, liberals get to Funding or whatever you know, if that's what you are, um, then the Democrats is we left in it, we just left them the and, and a lot of those guys and uh, you know all of our team is guys, but um, they feel the same way. They've been there in that long, way longer than me. You know, what I'm saying they feel the same way about that. We need to really straighten out. You know, you got to say you know if you gonna if you want our support, you got to say that you you're a Democrat. I mean. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I can see, if, I, you know, I can see both ways. You know, I think there are people who feel, you know, a, a connection to both, and I, I can understand that. I, I know for me personally that that I, I, I I'm in that same position of just being a, a straight progressive and not really feeling, you know, that that sort of need to to, mm -hmm. to to sort of have the fusion. I think part of that comes from the very unique political culture of Burlington, which. There are some very clear differences between Democrats and progressives, in specifically in the Burlington context. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I look at Win a Winooski, and you know, I see that you have representatives like uh, like Taylor Small, who are a, a fusion representative, who's doing great work, and I mean, is really a, a trailblazer herself. And so, you know, I, I you know, I don't really. I, you know, I don't, I'm not going to hold it against Taylor because yeah. you know she's got a D next to her next to her name as well as a P. You know, I think that uh, Taylor's work really speaks speaks for itself, mm -hmm. and so you know I, I understand. Yeah, that, I, 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 you know, I know I know Taylor. Um, yeah, she's such Ram. a cool person. She, she, yeah. She's awesome. You know, I met her with one of our, Keisha, our events we put on Fort Kesha around, and uh, she introduced me to her. You know, and um, it's good to know that she was from Winooski. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking. I don't like nobody. I like every. Yeah, no, my no, thing, I, know, I like I know, everybody. Right. <laughs> no, I see what real. you're saying. It's a theoretical uh, yeah, thing. It's yeah, not it's about a personal thing. It's a theoretical thing, and right. I, I can see the theory behind right, what you're right, saying there. Yeah. Is that there are some real differences between the yeah, two parties, right. and you know when you try and meld them, mm -hmm. uh, if, what, what are you, what do you really say? What what's the what's the, the statement there? So I, I, it's complicated for sure. Yeah, it, you know, it's, 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 it's well, it's, you know, it's easy for for me as a new um, Democratic um, chairman for Winooski. It's going to be easy for me because you know when we go, we're going to start raising a lot of funds in you know, Winooski for the Democrats, and you know, I'm working with them. Um, State level Democrat, you know, chairman, vice president. I mean, um, ADs and things like that. And so, um, coming up, because I'm just newly elected, but um, so now, so it's going. I'm everybody's like like my objectives and what I'm saying and what, what, what my team is saying about uh, definitely about money. You know, what I mean, fundraising because, you know, I I want my team to be able to go to um any place in USA to learn about what other Democrats are doing. Get um. Um, actually, talk about some. I uh, learned some more objectives for us. You know, let's go and broad, broaden our horizon. And what that does, and I'm probably preaching to the choir, is if they go meet with people in Washington or wherever they go, you know, what I mean, um, guess what? These people, uh, we're going to be recognized. And guess what happens? Economics come to town. Uh, uh, people want to build stuff here. Um, open up businesses. Kids want to, you know, come to Vermont for to school, UVM, St. Mike, Champlain, these places, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what happens. It happens that way. Yeah, so like I was saying, Max, I want to thank you for, man, 
you know, help us write that, you know, believe it in youth on boards. You and Brian Pine and um, Karen and um, Hanson and uh, Zoraya. Of course, yeah. You guys all sponsored the, the, the resolution, the, up, the, 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 what do you call it, the revised resolution yeah. about getting youth on boards. I mean, getting youth on boards, you know, as well as uh, creating more um, boards and committees they can sit on and even some voting rights, man. Because, like, for me, since we created, my organization created in 2003, you know, we, I, um, you know, with the help of city council and everybody, but, you know, it wouldn't happen without, without you guys. But, um, you know, you know I, I promote youth on boards around the state. I don't care what board. Like, we have youth coming on boards on Three Mile Trans and, you know, all, everywhere. We want youth on their boards. Any, you know, every board that there is a board, you should be on it, you know, and that's my objective, to get youth on these boards. And that's what we're going to be doing. And that's what we've been doing, and that's what we're going to continue to do. But for you to, um, you know, step up to, you know, like, you know, you are the president of the city council, and it's helped us, and Brian helped us. Brian was part of since 2000. He was helped us in 2003 when we first um, asked, could we have you from board to city council? And he was like, hell yeah, you know. And um, so and then you come right in, too, you know, like, you know, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Let's let's work together and revise this sure, resolution yeah. and get it right and make sure everybody supported. We had I don't know I don't know I think we had five or six people. I don't know how many people. Yeah, there were a bunch of other counselors that yeah. sponsored it because I think you know there's broad agreement that mm -hmm. there's real value, like you're saying, to having youth on these boards and and just providing input and getting involved in it. You know, I think we're going to be trying to see how this this really revived effort goes and and learn from that and continue to modify it and make sure that we're able to get um, the most value out of it for not only the the youth themselves but also for the boards as well um, you raised the question of you know voting because you know currently you know you have to be a vo Burlington voter to actually vote on it on these commissions so you know there might be a need to change the charter in the future to allow for for the youth members to, to be able to vote but I think that, that the, the, the key is that we're trying to just really make sure that we're involving youth in decision making, um, you know, and giving you the chance to really learn about um, their civic, their, 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 their sort of civic structures and engage with those structures in a more active way. Because right. um, sometimes it can be challenging to, to, to know how to get involved, where to get involved, and then even if you do, um, to really you know have a seat at the table and so this is really saying you know you're gonna have a seat at the table you're gonna be able to participate and um, one of the things that I liked that, that you all brought to the table in terms of the resolution itself that I thought was really good was that this idea of having uh, a mentor on the board um, who's currently serving on the board to work directly with any youth right. members to sort of t show them the ropes of how the board works and um, just some of the issues that are that are at play before that board. So I, th I think that that was one really good mm -hmm. addition to the to the to the uh, to the board structure. And, and um, so our youth, you know, I have youth, you know, I create youth on boards from my organization around the state. You know, I mean, from Rutland, you name it. You know, all the city county. You know, we had high schools mm -hmm. and um, even um, Fairhaven, and you know, all, you know, we had youth on boards. So and uh, <coughs> so. We don't call them, we don't say you're my mentee. We, everybody's a mentor in our organization. Everybody's a mentor. Because if you can't learn from that youth, then, then we don't want, you know, you, you need to go, we need to take you to, the, to some classes or something. Because if you can't learn from a youth, man, you know, like, and like, let me tell you something. Like, uh, people like, you know, like, we're part of Youth Service Providers Network and um, the coalitions and Department of Health. And one, one, um, I'll tell you, one year we had um, Shannon, who was our youth board president in uh, Rutland County, who was at the Rutland Youth Advisory, you know. And um, we, they will go over, all the executive directors and, and myself was, um, will go over, um, go over um, what they did, you know, what, what's going on in their organization with the youth piece that they, they, um, they um, direct or, you know, hold. And so, um, so we were sitting there, and I uh, brought Shannon. And one thing too, anybody will tell you with a youth agenda items on it. On, I'm, I'm always gonna bring you. You know, I brought tons of youth here, mm -hmm. many years in the city council here, because to talk about what their goals, dreams, and aspirations was, and and you know, it's important. I, for, anybody will tell you that I'm always gonna have youth with me if it's about a youth agenda, if a youth is on the agenda item. But anyway, so so we was in um, Rutland Advisory at. Um, some uh, a youth advisory committee, 
you know, and all the directors would talk about all the fun things and things they were they were reporting out, right? All the cool things they do, you know. When um, one lady, one of the directors said, "Well, we had we had a dance, we had fifty kids there." I thought, how wonderful is that? It's incredible. Yeah, fifty kids there at an event where there's no drugs and not on tobacco, having a healthy outlet, having you know a great time, you know. And then they said, "Bruce, Bruce, we know you had a dance too. You know, we had it. We had a, we had a youth center in Diamond Mall, like." Four thousand square feet or something, and so, and then um, they said, "How'd it go?" And um, that's we had it in the mall, not in our space, because it was. And so, Shannon, I said, "Shannon, you know, first of all, <laughs> Shannon, you know." And um, and they say, and then Shannon say, they, they said, "Well, how, how'd your dance go, Shannon?" And she said, "Oh, oh man," she said, "She said I knew I was gonna have to, you know, tell me not, not to say something." You know, about so I would just quiet listen to because I was laughing at the dance, laughing at them during the dance, how what they was feeling about the dance. And so she said, "Yeah, it, I told my rest of my youth board members said that we were, we weren't gonna show our face in town no more, and that it was a flop. You know, they said it was a flop because we weren't gonna show our face in town no more because of this dance." And said, "Oh, it didn't, it didn't go well." And she said, "No, it didn't go well." She said. Well, how many kids came? She said, 185. They said, 185? That's, that's, a, that's lot, a lot. Of, that's incredible. And she said, well, how was it a flop? She said, because we used to get over 300 kids there. See, because we used a peer-to-peer -peer model. And they, and then, and a lot of, lot, not them, but a lot of executive directors don't, they, they plan it themselves. They say, oh, use purple, and, and how about the streamers, and bring in, the, you know, the dogs and the yeah. cats, you know, whatever, you know, and um, I, I don't, we don't do that. We like, my job is to get the building, get the um, permits, get the um, uh, security, get the insurance, you know, that's my job. Their job is to bring in their peers, you know what I'm saying, and that's what they, that's their job. But anyway, so, 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 um, so I've been telling those, you know, we have, um, we go to like, um, to the Mount Pier, what's the name of that place? In, that um, that nice restaurant in Mount Pier, where the Capitol is, Capitol Plaza. Yeah, that nice little restaurant there around the Capitol. We go there for um, coalition meetings. And I've been telling them for years, man, that um, um, you need a youth advisory board. Now, I mean, I, I love all those people because they represent whoever they represent. And then a lot of them say that they can't get high school kids on their on on their board, you know. And I'm like, for me. It's because they need a youth advisory board to help them get, get their own damn kids. We, I don't tell them, I don't tell my youth board to, to um, you know, they, they find their own people. That's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why it's easy for us to get youth on boards and youth um, in part of something. Because our own youth boards are, are people who are part of our organization mm -hmm. go, go breathe. Bring, and we don't care if you bring your sister and your boyfriend. We don't because all of them. Guess what? Cause when they come and be a part of our programs, that we are actually educated on drugs and alcohol, tobacco, you know, opiate effects, you know, things like that. Guess Super what? Super important. That's very important. So if it, we don't, we, we, you can bring in thirty people you want to. Because guess what? You know, because everybody around you for varsity boys got to go to these meetings mm -hmm. about drugs and alcohol, tobacco. And guess what? If nobody else come. But the, um, our youth board members, guess what? Just 30, 30 kids in our in an event getting education on drugs and alcohol, and tobacco. You know, we don't we don't care. You know, about nothing. We don't care about um, we don't care. So you know, so the more you have on our advisory board, you know, as far as my organization, the better it is. You know, they can have a dance yeah, by sure. their damn self, and nobody know and who all the people they invite they don't have to come. You know, but. So, so that's so that's 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 a lesson. And I've been telling the people at the coalition meetings years ago. I, I stopped going to them personally, <clears throat> but um, because you know they, they don't have youth. They don't have well. Uh, they all I I, lo I love them all because they all they work with the people. No, I really do yeah, because yeah. they work. They, of course, we, yeah. We, we know we, they work with youth and they work with mostly. They say they can't get high, so we know they work with elementary and middle school kids. You know, we know they work with them. So we need them to work with them. We need them to work with everybody they can work with. 50 kids, 10 kids to have been. We need them to work with them. And so I'm not knocking nobody, but but uh, I think for me, my objectives, personal objectives are you need a youth advisory board to help you decide on the things that they want to do in life. <laughs> Come on, man. You just can't, you know. Sure, you, yeah. You know. And that's where, what, what we were trying to get at with this resolution on the boards and commissions, for Let sure. Let me just tell you one little thing about um, 
um, um, being um, like this, like like adults, and say, "I've been there, done that." Right? Yeah, you've been there, done that. Yeah, kind of theory. Because guess what? If you were back in the caveman days, if you were um, if you drink a bottle of vodka, guess what? You are gonna get drunk. Oh, but the thing, and you drink one today, you're probably gonna get drunk. But the thing is, how did you learn about drinking it? You know, so now it's like social media. It's like great goose make you loose. You know what I mean? You know, and so all these ways these youth are learning how to drink and smoke and risky behaviors is not how we. How, and I know it's not how. It's not how you learned it, maybe. Right, not, it's definitely, but I know shifted. definitely it's definitely how, shifted. That's sure. what I'm trying to say. So, so when adults say that they've been there, done that. They haven't. They haven't. Yeah, you they don't understand. Yeah, it's, no, they don't it's definitely it. shifted. So they sure. think they can make decisions for these youth without, you know, without um, asking them. So that's, no, I hear that's, you. Yeah. So you got me on that one, right? That's what I, I tell them that for years. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's for real. It's for real. It's, they, they, um, what? It's, the, it's social media stuff that uh, youth um, know that you and I don't have no clue on, maybe. Stuff that they be, my little niece tell me about stuff that... So I don't know no, no, no names or nothing about it. But so, Max, so we probably got like two minutes or whatever. Um, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you um, help create the youth on boards. We're going to move it forward. You know, I'm, I'm a, I, I got a new person. I'm working with us. Her name is Evelina Zirka. She's uh, from Burlington Technical. Um, Very cool. She's awesome. Yeah, she's that's my awesome. intern. She's a, she's a paid intern for us. That's incredible. I know, man. Very she, cool. Very and she's cool. like... You know, she's so like, you know, she's like gung ho. She's like so excited to be. That's great. You know, yeah, she's definitely boots on the ground. And, and uh, so you will get to meet her. Because I, to I told her that um, you will get to meet her. You know, I told her that she will get to meet you. I mean, you know, you know, I, I, see, that's another thing, too. Here's a youth on my board who say, I said, guess what? You can, only, you can only get to work, not only meet the president of the Brooklyn City, but work with him. How, what do you think they're worth in? Their worth is how they feel. Their worth is and when they hear something like that. You know, man, that's gigantic for those youth. You know what I mean? It builds totally and it does. builds their self-esteem. Would you agree with? That? Yeah, absolutely. That's the other piece of this, the, the youth on boards piece for sure. Right. So, yeah. so, 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 you got anything? You got, you got anything you want to say no. before we cut out of here? No. no. Really appreciate it. No, thanks. I really appreciate you guys having me on the show. It's been great, to, great thanks. conversation. Yes, really appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. And um, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate look forward to keeping it. working with you no and, and, and the, the other incredible youth yeah. that work with your organization. No doubt about it. Thank you so much. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Straight Talk for Macho. And I'm Bruce Wilson. This is Max Tracy, Burlington City Council President.